straight like that. Okay, cool. So I already dropped that in the chat. So if y'all miss out on it, that is on y'all. It is relatively close to activating, but not quite yet. So let's go over that L real quick. Because like I said, we do not hide from the L's. Too many people in trading I've seen in my two years, they damn near run away from the L's. They don't even want to talk about the L's. We go talk about the L's because it's a possibility that we can learn from the L. Maybe we can't learn anything. Maybe it's just the L you just got to hold, okay? So let's go over uh, GBP NZD. So on GBP NZD, right, um, let me actually go to a, a different data feed. Because I ain't gonna lie, even though I lost this trade, this is actually an example of a trade, even in retrospect, I would have taken it again, I'm gonna be honest with you. I liked it, it just didn't work out. It is what it is. Um, GBP, NZD, uh, we go pull up the Oanda broker. All right, cool. So, all right, but, because we actually initially sold GBP, NZD earlier um, in the week from like over here, and we caught this move, which was dope. But it wasn't filling us this time around. So um, let's go ahead and break this down. Let me erase. Uh, where was it when I sent it out? It was uh, somewhere over here. So let me use the replay tool. It was like somewhere over here. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and break this down real quick. So, um, you know, as you start getting on my call, you'll you'll basically start seeing um, pretty much all my setups are extremely similar. So one of the things I want to be able to preach and keep preaching to people is, if you are not gotten to a point of consistency in your trading, start taking screenshots of all your setups, win, lose, or break even, whatever, and start asking yourself, do these setups look the same? Do they look similar? Or do they look completely different from one setup to the next, right? When I was hella inconsistent, losing a lot, one setup to the next setup used to look completely different. So you want to be able to make sure a lot of your setups basically look, I'm not going to say the exact same, but for the most part, it should look basically the exact same, okay? So... I like to start off on a one hour. So the first confirmation, um, so I have four different confirmations I like to be able to focus on, okay? I like to look for the trend. I like to form a bias, right? The bias just means what direction am I looking to take it in once I find out what the trend is. I wanna be able to see if I can find divergence. And I wanna see, is the market exhausted? I really don't know how to spell exhausted. Uh, shoot. I think that's how you spell exhaust. I have no idea, it really doesn't matter. So these are gonna be my four primary confirmations that I wanna look for. And, I, and after I find these confirmations, I'm just going to straight look for an entry. That's literally how simple my trading works. I don't be flipping through all these damn time frames, the daily, the four hour. I don't do all that, right? Everything I do is on a one hour. When I start looking for my entry, that's whenever I start, you know, kind of flipping through the time frame. So let's talk about the trend, right? Really don't even have to talk about the trend. It's obviously an uptrend. Like anybody that knows anything about uptrend and downtrend, this is pretty freaking obvious. I'm not going to curse because my mom on the call, but this is pretty obvious, okay? This is an uptrend. So this is about, not about, this is damn near 1300 pips, okay? This move initiated November 7th and it peaked right here, which was, shit, I guess yesterday or today. Damn, I ended up cursing, it's all good. Um, so January 18th, so yesterday, two days ago. So this ended up peaking two days ago. This initial strong impulse of moves to the upside, which initiated the trend, started last year, November 7th. So that was yeah, two months ago, like two and a half months ago, really damn near. So obviously, you know, to a certain extent, as we lost, you can understand we probably lost because what it was a counter trend trade. So that's a part of what happens whenever you're trading against the trend. You got to understand right now. Keep in mind, I have a lot of dubs trading against the trend, but obviously you got to hold some of these L's because the market just might not be ready to reverse it. It might just want to keep going up which is what it showed us on this example. So obviously for the trend, we know that it is an uptrend. That's pretty straightforward. The bias, since we already know that we lost a trade, obviously was a, was a, a, a short, a short or a sell. So we were looking for shorting opportunities or we were looking for sales, okay? Now, um, the main thing that I was really focusing on is, remember like how I said, we initially took a sell from over here, which I'm actually gonna go find so I can show y'all because I love to be able to show y'all all these trades I personally take, I send in my chat. So y'all have the ability to take advantage of all these. Um, that was, what did I say? January 7th? Hold on. January 12th. Let me go find that joint real quick. Because, um, you know, we initially took the sell and the market came back, rejected off the same area. So I was like, oh shit, it's going to give us another opportunity. That's not what happened, but that's what I felt like was going to happen. Um, and I'll show you another example of why I also felt like that would have been a good idea from another trade that we actually took two different positions on that went in our favor. 
Um, January 12th. GBP and GD, where you at? Here we are. All right, so this is the initial setup I sent out right here, right? See the picture, see the parameters, so on and so forth, right? So this was the initial trade that initiated this big ass move to the downside. We took advantage of that, right? Now, the thing that I was looking for is notice how the market, right, came back to this area, rejected, came back up, rejected again. I was like, okay, so the market literally came back to the highest point. If you look to the left, there's literally nothing over here. The market broke above this area, but there's basically nothing to the left. Like, it's pretty much just this. So I'm like, okay, it's rejecting off of this, you know, extreme resistance area. So I'm going to show you guys an example that this actually went in our favor. So if I go look at GBP, no, your, wait, GBP, JPY, I think. Yeah, so look at this, right? I still got this marked up. So. This is similar to what I was looking for. So notice, once again, I'm not gonna go look for it in the chat because I ain't trying to like just waste too much time like with all that, but y'all can go on uh, my YouTube channel. Y'all can find the session that I recorded going over both of these, but um, both of these trades were sent out. Both of these were profitable trades. As you can see, I still have the markups here because I'm gonna uh, upload these to my YouTube channel and break down the analysis. But overall, we initially took this sale, which was about an eight and a half to one risk to reward. The market did what? Came back rejected again off the same area and we took another sell right here so that's what i'm saying that's basically what i was looking for gbp nzd ended up giving us an initial drop right here came back rejected the same way that i sold gbp jpy again over here that's basically what i was looking for over here it just didn't work out so like i said everything is based off of you know a good reason it's just like i said the market is not always just gonna go in your favor it is what it is so um you know going back into this um, let's talk about what I was actually looking at. So now that you guys know one of the main reasons why I was looking for this move, because it rejected off of this high that we sold from initially, um, I noticed that we had what's called a liquidity sweep. So if you guys don't know what that is, I'm about to go ahead and break that down for y'all real quick. Okay. So what is a liquidity sweep, right? Notice how the market has a high here. That was basically at the same area this was. That was basically at the same area that this was. Notice how all three of these areas are essentially in the same exact spot. What this is, is the market building up people's stop losses to be able to come back and take their damn money. It's as simple as you could put it, right? Just, oh uh, shit. Um, just like that, okay? So that's basically what that's gonna symbolize. So, you know, whenever I saw the market peak above this high, that's what really gave me the confidence. So why is that important, okay? So if you guys don't know, a lot of times built up support and resistance zones to a lot of traders, it makes sense for them to keep selling because think about it, right? It sold off, came back, sold off, came close, right? Sold off, came back, sold off. So what people are gonna keep doing is in their head, it's like, oh, this is a really strong area. It was, but technically if y'all don't know, the more times the same support and resistance area gets touched, it's not getting stronger. It's actually getting weaker, okay? The second touch is gonna be the strongest one. So whenever it initially forms a high or a low and then it comes back and retests it, this is always gonna be the strongest one. Each time it comes back after the second retest, it is getting weaker, but a lot of people perceive it to be getting stronger. So what the market is doing is it's playing around with that logic. So the logic that people think, oh, every time it comes back, I'm gonna keep selling it. They're going to keep giving you the ability to think that you're right, right? Notice how it came close, sold off again. This one started wicking, right? They're going to be like, oh, man, I got a good wick entry. Oh, it's going to my favor. Then it popped up and would have knocked out your stop loss. So all three of these areas are in the same spot because these all represent traders who had their stop losses up here, right? Maybe they're trying to swing trade. I don't know what they're trying to do. But what the market did was the market peaks right above their stop losses right here. Okay, so from my experience, right? A lot of times, whenever the market barely goes above previous highs or barely goes below previous lows and then immediately goes in the complete opposite direction with aggression, right? Notice how aggressively the market ended up dropping in the opposite direction barely after going above these highs, right? That is going to be called a liquidity sweep. So a lot of times in that instance, right, this is going to be an initiation of a continuation to that given direction. So since this direction is moving down, a lot of times 
this is going to pull back and continue dropping. So on top of that, what other things did we recognize? We also got a break of structure right here. What is a break of structure? A previous support or resistance level being broken. That's how you can start identifying possibly what direction the market is going to start going. And so, as I said, right, trading is all about, you know, percentages and you're going to take your L's, right? But it's always about having the confidence when you took the trade, okay? So, like I said, I still would have taken this trade in retrospect. It just, it is what it is because everything I'm showing you guys is valid. A lot of this information I'm breaking down are successful trades on other examples, right? Break of structure, liquidity sweep. Um, and then basically what I was looking for is the retracement. Same thing. Like I said, the market also came back to a previous resistance and rejected, which I just showed you guys on GBP JPY actually worked in our favor. So all of these confirmations usually work out for me. It didn't in this example and it is what it is. So what I ended up doing was I was like, okay, I see all this information. I got my break of structure. Now I just want to be able to see, do I have a potential entry, right? Um, I don't know if I had divergence on this or not. Move the TDI out the way. Uh, yeah, I did have divergence. Okay, peep this, right? Let me erase this. So the other confirmation I told you guys, so what did I say? The trend, the bias, divergence, and exhaustion, okay? So let me show you guys the exhaustion. The exhaustion initiated over here. What do I mean by that? So if you're utilizing the RSI, whenever this white line comes outside of the purple box, it is symbolizing that the market is getting weaker in whatever direction it's trending in. So it doesn't mean just randomly hop in for a sale because obviously if you would have did that right here, your stop loss would have been hit. The market kept going. But I want you guys to notice the difference between this strong impulsive move to the upside and all of this choppy nonsense. It's still going up, but look at how ugly this is. This is not the same thing as this, okay? This is how you know that the market is getting weaker. It's not just going straight up. It's now kind of going, it's still going up, but now it's going kind of sideways. And then you got that aggressive drop. So where did this initial aggressive drop come from, okay? So to show you guys divergence, if I put on the line chart, notice how the market is going down on the RSI. Why is that important? Because to detect divergence, if your indicator is going in one direction and the market is going in the opposite direction, that is gonna be divergence, right? What does divergence do for you? For me, it gives me the ability to be able to identify a possible reversal, right? So notice, it is not by mistake that at the same time this was going down and this was going up, you had a very aggressive move to the downside, okay? So this is what initiated that initial sell that we took advantage of last week. Now, once again, right, there's divergence. Like I said, another example of why I took this trade because once again, I saw divergence. So notice how in this instance, the market is going up, right? But in this instance, the market is going down. So once again, if I go to GBP, JPY, I still have it marked up. See how this is going up and this is going down? That's why we caught such a good move and we made profit. So like I said, it's going to work out in some situations and other situations, the market is just going to be like, I don't want you to make no money today. And you just got to be okay with it. It doesn't mean, because I'll be honest with you, as I'm breaking this down, I already broke this down before I got on the call when I said stop loss got hit. There's literally nothing I could have, the only thing I could have did differently is just not taking the trade. But in retrospect, there's no reason that I would have passed up the trade because of all this information I'm telling you guys that normally works out in my favor. So this is just literally an L I got to hold. There's nothing I could have did differently at all, literally. So one other thing I want to be able to reference. If you get to a point to where every time you lose a trade, you're always going back and being like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have did that. Man, I knew I shouldn't have did that. Ah, oh, I shouldn't have did that. Keep practicing. You want to get to where I'm currently at, right? You want to get to the points where whenever you take an L, and you can be honest with yourself and be like, man, I really couldn't have did anything different. I mean, this was a good trade. It just didn't go in my favor. That's whenever your confidence is going to start being a lot higher and you're not really going to be as emotionally attached to the L's. I have no emotional attachment to this L because like I said, it's a good trade. Look at all this information I'm breaking down and I keep going back to GBP, JPY reference and all the same information has been proven to work in a lot of other setups. It just didn't work in this one. It is what it is, right? So now that you guys see all the confirmations, now I'm going to show you guys where I got my entry from. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This entry is definitely a little bit different than how I normally take entries. So if you guys get on my calls, you know, normally whenever I take an entry, 
it's going to be off of an engulfing or institutional candle. Now, this technically was still off of that, but I'm going to break this down, okay? Keep in mind, what I'm saying doesn't mean that I still wouldn't have taken it. So even though I'm saying this is a little bit different, it was still a good trade, right? Because this is still something that I would have traded off of. But normally, whenever I'm taking a sell, I want to be able to find a bearish engulfing candle. So if you guys notice what I highlighted, you might be like, well, why did you sell off of a bullish engulfing candle? Let me explain. So the way that the market works, okay? Yes, normally, say for instance, if we go to CAD JPY without uh, skipping to it yet, right? So if we go to CAD, hopefully this doesn't drop without us, but you know, we go, we go see what to do. So if I go to CAD JPY 55 minute, right? Notice this is what I normally want to see for a sell a bearish engulfing candle okay this is what i normally want to see now notice if i go back to gbp and zd you're going to clearly be able to see that the candle of interest that i marked up is clearly not bearish it is clearly bullish okay so the reason why i'm bringing that up is because technically speaking um you know in a smart money institutional style of trading this is still a valid candle to sell off of, okay? I just normally don't sell off of, I just, so like you can do it in both instances. So you can technically, um, let me let me go show y'all another example real quick because I want to be able to get y'all's eyes used to seeing like what I'm trying to reference. So if I go to the one hour, okay? This is a similar concept, right? Now I'm not person, I wasn't personally looking at this setup, but look at this, right? So say, for instance, this market is bullish, right? I drew up this support zone. This is actually a trade I didn't take. I should have taken it, but I didn't just for whatever reason. Um, so say, for instance, if the market were to pull back, right, and hit this candle, you could technically buy off of this candle, even though it is a bearish candle. So the same example that I'm breaking down for this is similar for GBP NZD. So just how I'm saying you can technically buy off of a bearish candle. You can technically sell off of a bullish candle, okay? Which is what this is. Now, as I said before, y'all don't normally see me do that. Um, so I'm going to be honest. I don't necessarily know how much it has to do with the fact that we lost the trade, but I don't really think it has that much to do with it just because, like I said, regardless of it, it was still a good trade. Yeah, I would have preferred this to be a bearish candle like all my other scenarios, but this is the this is what the market gave me, so that's what I took advantage of. Um, but that's like a gem that I want y'all to be able to learn because in the future, um, I kind of got away from these. Like I kind of got away from selling off of bullish candles and buying off of bearish candles. I'm getting back into it. I did have success with it, but um, I kind of just let, I don't even know why I stopped trading off of those. I think because I was trying to refine where I'm at now with just strictly trading bullish candles for, you know, buys and trading bearish candles for sales. But now I'm kind of back into this. So this is going to be similar. So I want y'all to remember, remember how I used to tell y'all the way that I used to start marking up my charts, right? I initially take the 50%, okay, of the bearish candle or the bullish candle, like so, okay? That's initially what I do, right? Now, what I want you guys to notice is there's a difference, okay? So if you're selling off of a bearish candle, you're taking the 50% off of the smaller candle, okay? So you will be taking the 50% off of this small green candle, like so. Now, this is where it gets a little different. If you're selling off of a bullish candle, you're not technically going to take the 50% like this. You would only take the 50% of this smaller candle if you were looking to buy off of this one. Since we're looking to sell off of this one, we're actually going to take the 50% of the bigger one. Drop a one in the chat if that makes sense, right? So if you're buying or selling off of the bullish candle, if you're buying off of the bullish candle, you're taking the 50% of the smaller one. If you're selling off of this bullish candle, you need to take the 50% off of the bigger candle. So let me get y'all to drop one in the chat if that's making sense. All right. Cool. Okay. So this is very important because it's like you don't like if you're trading off of this, you're not, you're, you're giving yourself too small of a window because the market is definitely going to retrace deeper. Obviously, it hits stop loss, but in other examples in the future, like if I get another setup that actually goes in our favor. Um, I'll definitely go ahead and break that down. It's just, I don't get that many of these. It's usually just going to give me the bearish candle for a sell and a bullish candle for a buy. 
So this was a unique setup because like if I keep flipping through this time frame, there wasn't really a pretty bearish candle. So I was kind of forced. I don't want to use the word force. So I would that was that was just what I ended up saying that I like. Force is not the right word. Um, so that was just what I ended up saying that I like. So similar to how I look at this candle is how I'm looking at this candle. I'm just trading off of the body of it. So if I was buying, okay, so let's go back to the other example. So if I'm buying off of the bearish candle, right? Same example. So if I'm going to buy off of this bearish candle in this scenario, I would not be looking for the 50% of the small green one, okay? I'll be looking for the 50% of the big red one, like so, all right? Just so you guys see that it's the same concept in both examples. That's, that's important to know. I want to see if I can find, um, I don't know if I'll be able to find, I'd have to go look for, I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, if I find one like in the future that actually ended up playing out nicely, um, I'll screenshot that and I'll make sure I show y'all that. But um, as of right now, I'm not going to try to spend my time to do that because I just randomly be looking for something I can't, I don't even know where it would be. All right, cool. So let's go back to GBP and ZD. Uh, we got about 20 minutes left on the call, so I'm going to try to speed it up. But this, this is the thing that I want y'all to understand. Like, notice how much time I'm spending on something that we already lost money on, right? It's not irrelevant. Even though I know there's nothing I could have did differently, I just want to keep showing y'all that this is where y'all need to be. Like, y'all need a back test, back test, back test, back test, right? Because as I'm back testing, I possibly could have found something I could have did differently, but I didn't. So, um, but I just want to break it down. So notice, once I got the 50% of the candle, as usual, right? We know that we could look to take an entry off the 50%, okay? We know that, right? But as I tell you guys, I don't trade based off the 50% because a lot of times the market doesn't give me the retracement to the 50%. So a lot of times you might just miss the entry altogether if you're trying to trade off the 50%. No, that's a good point. Yeah. So shout out to Axel. Since you need other people to buy where you buy, what is your opinion on 40 minute time frame? Not many people see that OB candle. So my opinion, bro, um, is uh what what's 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 the uh what did they say? So the the term that I learned is they said the market is fractal. So like that's like something that's like imprinted in my brain. So the market is fractal. What does that mean? That means everything is the same thing on every time frame, but it's relative to what you're looking for. So that is a good question because if you notice, literally what he said, I understand what he's saying. It's not it's it's very few people that trade off the forty minute time frame. Basically, right? Normally people just have the fifteen, the thirty, the forty five, the one hour, the four hour the daily, the weekly, the monthly, right? Now, I'm not saying that y'all got to do what I do, but what I ended up figuring out is I like having all of these time frames because it gives me the ability to find. Now, obviously, like I said, I'm gonna just keep repeating. Obviously, this wasn't a successful trade, but in other instances, I'll find the entry off like the 35 minute, the 25 minute, the 20 minute, the 50 minute, the 55 minute, the three hour, the eight hour, the nine hour. Let me go show you guys a couple examples, actually. So to answer your question, bro, um, it really just depends on what you're looking for. But I personally like using all of those time frames because it'll be a lot of trades. The easiest way for me to explain, it, it'll be a lot of trades that I would pass up if I didn't take advantage of those time frames because I wouldn't see a candle that I like, right? So that was a good question though, bro, because yeah, you're right. It's a lot of people that do not use all these random time frames. Look, look at this, right? I mean, on CAD JPY, look, that perfect example. CAD JPY is off the 55 minute. Look at this. That's why I got it right here. Look. And I always, on my entry, if you guys notice, the two hours from the original setup that we took earlier this week, so CAD JPY. So CAD JPY is another example. So like, I didn't even think about that. So just like GBP and ZD that we lost, CAD JPY is like GBP JPY, right? We initially took this sell here, went in our favor. The market ended up pulling back to this area. So I'm just looking to sell it again. <laughs> so I'm basically just doing the same shit over and over and over again. But if you notice, the 55 minute is where I found this candle of interest. So basically, like I actually said, um, I would just say, bro, you know, just add the, I would just personally add the different time frames and just start back test and see what works for you, you know. But yeah, I would not have found this candle because think about it, right? If I'm generically using the 15 minute, this is not sexy. 30 minute, this is not sexy. Uh, 45 minute, this is not sexy. One hour, think about that. Think about 
all the generic time frames that most people use, all of these look ugly. But on that 55, bam, you feel me? It's like, damn, where did that come from? It came from the 55 minute, you feel me? So yeah, bro, I, I would recommend using the time frames because that's literally a prime example of the 15, 30 minute, one hour, 45 minute just shows you a big ass wick. But that 55 gives you the candle that you want to see. You feel me? Um, look at this. Look, even though this trade didn't activate, I ended up deleting the setup. This is a two hour time frame. So I use a lot of different time frames to be able to help me. I know, bro. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, bro, I would definitely make sure, you know, I would add those time frames. You feel me? And if y'all don't know how to add different time frames, I got y'all right. So if y'all go right here, time interval, you can literally, right? You can do minutes, hours. You can type in the time frame and then just hit add. So if y'all want to, um, y'all can take a screenshot. I mean, it's really just five minute interval. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, one hour. And then from the one hour, I just one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour. And I go all the way up to the 12 hour. So if y'all want to copy this, y'all can. But yeah, I know it's a little surprising because I'm as far as I know, I'm the only person that has this many different time frames but i know for a fact it's contributed to a lot of my success because i'm able to find these candles because i'm using these time frames when other people would pass up the setup altogether because they're not going to find a sexy entry right think about all the people that are not looking at cad jpy because they're like 15 minute ah that's ugly 30 minute ah, i don't really like that 45 minute damn that's really ugly one hour Ah, uh, there's nothing here. Let me go to the next setup. But me, I'm like, bam, look at it. It's right there. <laughs> you feel me? So yeah, definitely shout out to the random ass time frames for sure. So does a fib give you different percentages on each time frame? No, the fib is going to be the same no matter what time frame. That's also a good question. The fib is going to remain the same. So the fib has nothing to do with the actual time frame itself. Good question though. Um, so let me go back to GBPNZD so I can finish breaking this down. Then I'm going to go to CAD JPY and then we'll finish with the call. So look at this. So this is usually kind of like what happened. So like I said, I knew that I was pretty much right. It's just that the market, I guess, wanted to sweep more liquidity real quick. Because as you can see, not to say it's going to necessarily fall from here, but this rejection looks kind of valid. Um, but I'd have to wait for another you know, good looking candle to actually get back in. So it looks like the market maybe wanted to sweep liquidity one more time. Now, as you can see, it's given like an aggressive drop. Um, so look, we can start looking right now. Yeah, I, I know I'm not going to find anything right now because it just initiated, but um later on or maybe tomorrow maybe this gives us another opportunity to get in but yeah obviously right now um i mean shit mm, i don't think i'm gonna do it i'm, I'm gonna leave it alone i'm gonna leave it alone because it's not actually a guarantee and um even though this is an engulfing candle it's not i i don't just feel super comfortable i'd rather maybe see a little more price action but yeah and it also depends on how aggressive you are. Some people, they just like hopping back in. I don't like hopping back in a trade that I just lost unless I have more information. So yeah, it did sweep this high. Maybe it is about to finally drop. It did throw in a golfing candle, but I'm gonna be honest, this isn't like compared to the candles I like, this isn't the sexiest engulfing candle. So I'm not just like overly enticed to get in. Um, so, but yeah, it depends on the person. Some people be like, oh, I'm about to get back in. I'm not about to do that. I'm gonna just... Because we got CAD JPY, so I don't want to put myself in another potential loss for no damn reason whenever I already lost on the setup. Let me just put my effort into a fresh setup, which is CAD JPY. So all this information I'm dishing out to you guys are, this is all mental, right? Has nothing to do with skill. Because it's going to be somebody that's like, oh, man, I'm mad that I lost. I'm just waiting for another opportunity to get back in. Oh, I'm going to get back in. I don't trade like that, okay? If I can just pass up a loss and just go to a completely fresh setup, I would rather do that. So. Even though I'm looking at this and I see it is throwing another candle, it's not the sexiest candle. So I'm, I'm not really that enticed. But anyway, so going back to this. So 40 minute, right? This is how I look for my entry, guys. I utilize a Fibonacci to find my entry. So I'm going to take my Fib from the high to the low. I'm going to obviously turn it to the regular Fib right here. Okay. And what I like to do is I like to be able to use, which is what I explained, I like to take a entry zone from the opening of the candle to the 
And within this entry zone, I want to be able to utilize one of these fib levels for my entry. So basically, literally what y'all see, this is where I have my entry. And that's where I took the trade from. Now, I'm going to be real. If you guys see this initial reaction, I really thought this was it, but it wasn't, right? That's why you don't necessarily ever get too excited. Look at how amazing this candle reacted, right? but the market had other ideas. Look, this is literally the candle that put us in the trade. If you were to see something like this and close, you're like, oh yeah, this is finna drop. But like I said, the market had other plans. So it, it actually did give a great reaction initially. It's just that the market wasn't done going up. So it is what it is. Like I said, I don't have any regrets because as I keep speaking on it, as I just broke this whole thing down, like I said, I would take this trade over and over and over again. It just, it just wasn't in our favor right now. Um, so that's that for GBPNZD. Um, let me erase that. So this is the original one. So yeah, like I said, I'm gonna keep that marked up. Um, now nah, I'm gonna just go ahead and erase that. I don't need that on there anymore. Uh, go ahead and get rid of these alerts. All right, so that's over and done with. Um, and like I said, maybe later on or whatever, but I'm not really tripping on it because we got a whole another setup. Um, so CAD JPY, let's go over CAD JPY real quick. Um, I'll get rid of all this later. Let me just go to. All right, but. So CAD JPY, right? Um, 55 minutes. So let me, it was like up in here when I called it out. So let me use that replay tool. So somewhere up in here. All right, so let's start off on that one hour. So same concept, we're gonna look for the same, uh, what did I say, same four confirmations, all right? So um, this market obviously at one point in time was bullish. I mean, it technically could still be bullish. This obviously could just be the retracement to continue going higher. Um, so the market did initially run for about 800 pips from September, ended up peaking at October 19th, right before Halloween. And then from that point, it just started dropping, 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 okay? So technically, as of right now, the way that I'm looking at this, I'm no longer looking at that bullish right now. I'm looking at this as a bearish trend. So this high was set. The market is yet to come back and violate this high, right? We have multiple levels of structure being broken all the way down. The most recent level of structure being broken is here. Okay. If I were to pull out my Fibonacci tool, we could start from the high to the low and see how deep of a retracement we had which as you can see, the deepest level of retracement um, happened. So if you guys know anything about imbalances, obviously this is an imbalance right here. So not only did it react off the of imbalance, it also reacted off the 78% FIB. I like that, right? What did the market do? The market ended up dropping. Once again, broke a level of structure, ended up giving us a retracement, and then it reacted again. So I can actually pull out the FIB again, right? High to low. And then once again, what did it do? So let me remove this. So once again, the market ended up reacting. Um, it actually peaked at the most extended level to 88%. But as you can see, the majority of the rejection came at the 78, right? So if I erase all that, um, now you guys see why I, have, why I have my bias for a sell. So as I said earlier in the week, um, I'll actually show you guys because this was actually this week. Um, called out CAD JPY earlier, the initial sell right here. So this is the initial sell that we took. It hit take profit one, then ended up coming back and hitting break even. Okay. Um, right here, no, right here. TP one hit right CAD JPY risk to award one and one and a half adjust SL, and then it ended up coming back and hitting break even. Okay. So. The initial sell that we took was, I think it was off the two hour. So the initial sell that we took was off of this candle right here. As you can see, the market reacted with this bullish candle, ended up dropping, and then came back and hit break even, okay? So now where we're at is off this 55 minute candle, okay? Which is right here. It's 55 minute candle. So what I wanna be able to see is, um, let me see if we had any divergence. I don't think we did. Yeah, we didn't have no divergence. That's cool. Uh, and yeah, even though this happened over here. So this is technically divergence. Um, the market is going up in the same instance that this is obviously, you know, trending down. 
you know? So that actually was some divergence, not the prettiest divergence, but it actually is divergence. Um, and as you can see, the market is exhausted, right? Incredibly exhausted right here, which lines up right here, okay? Bam. So this is why you started getting this retracement to the downside. The market is showing exhaustion, okay? Now, um, as I said, you know, I ended up finding this candle pretty much based off the fact this is something else y'all can start paying attention to. Um, these are called manipulation wicks right here. So I usually, you can, the, the time frame you usually find these on the most is honestly going to be the one hour. I'm going to be honest with you. So a lot of times whenever you see a candle, and I'm going to show y'all another example. Let me just go to another random pair and show y'all the same shit. Eurochef. Um, this is something I said I've marked up. It just never pulled back. As you can see, I still got it marked up. It just, it never pulled back. So notice this wick, okay? Now, wicks like this to the average person, it probably doesn't mean anything. You're just going to overlook this. But within this wick, let me show you. Actually, you still on the call? I got you. Look, peep this, right? I'm about to put you on some more game. Right? Right here. Okay? About to put you on some more game, my brother. We're going to find an engulfing candle on a 25-minute time frame off of this, right? Peep this. Ain't that crazy? Drop a one in the chat if that's crazy. Bro, ain't that crazy? Look, one hour, 25 minute. If you were not utilizing the 25 minute, you would have never found this candle. Let me show you. 15 minute. Nah, I take that back. You would have found on the 15. But it looks the best on the 25. Let's be honest, right? The 15, I'm going to be honest. The 15 looks good enough to trade off of, but it looks the best on the 25. Let's be honest. It looks the best on the 25, right? Clearly. But this is what I'm talking about. These are the random time frames that the average person does not utilize, but you can find some of the best looking candles. So, you know what I'm saying? Now you're saying exactly why. Because I know a lot of people get on my call and they're like, bro, this dude got a lot of random ass. He got three hours, six hours, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Why you got all them time frames? This is why I got all these time frames. That's why I say I use the one hour to have an analysis. I only use these whenever I'm looking for my entry. That's why y'all never see me use any of these until I'm actually looking for an entry. Literally, these are only four entries. The one hour is to analyze all these random time frames are specifically for entries. That's it. So now y'all know my sauce. You feel me? Now y'all know my sauce. So let me go back to uh, where are we on? CAD JPY. Right here. Ah, uh, you dirty little whatever. I ain't go curse. I hope this pulls back. Um, but at this point, I don't know. It might be gone. I'm not tripping. I'm not one of them people that tries to chase a trade. Um, it's either gonna activate or it's not. My entries, you. I mean, if y'all like, I said, if y'all follow my chat, my entries basically always activate. Obviously, they don't necessarily activate and go in our favor every single time. But my entries usually always activate. So. I'm pretty confident with my entry, so I'm pretty stern on it's either going to activate or it's just going to leave without us. I don't try to get in early. I'm not like, oh, it's rejecting. Let me try to, nah. It's either going to activate or it's not. So we're just going to hold this. This is valid up until the time that it breaks this off. If it breaks this off, obviously, I'm going to delete it. Or if it just consolidates and the session ends. But I mean, shit, the, the London session is literally about to start in six minutes. So the market really hasn't even really started pumping a lot of liquidity yet. And um, this could still be something that happens throughout New York. So we'll just leave this here. But, you know, hopefully it doesn't just reject without us. But for the most part, you know, kind of going back to this candle. Um, now that you guys have seen the trend, the bias, the exhaustion, the divergence. Now we're going to look for our entry. So once again, what I'm going to do is I like to start off by locating and seeing the 50 percent. Like I said, not because I'm necessarily going to enter off the 50 percent, but I just always want to know where it is as I'm marking up the chart. Next thing I want to do um, is, you know, look for an entry zone, right, from the opening to the 50%. And then I'm going to take my fib from the high to the low. Going to switch it up to here, smart chart. And as you can see where I got my entry, right here at the 78%. Why? Because the 71% is not in my entry zone. The 61% is not in my entry zone. 
but the 78 percent is so by default that's where i'm gonna get my entry and i'll be honest with you guys my trading completely took a complete like 360 once i started finding my entry based off fib levels because before that you know you're either generically you're either going to trade from the opening or you're going to trade from the 50 percent. there's not really an in-between because it's like what are you basing on the in-between from so generically most people that trade these candles are either going to go to the 50 percent, or they're going to do the opening there is no like in between so this helps me get the in between which in my personal opinion are the best entries for my style so if i go back over here as you can see that's where i got my entry 78.6 percent lined up perfectly and um you guys probably already know my stop loss is always going to go above that wick and I'm always going to add two pips of spread. That's why my stop loss is always going to be a little higher than. I'm never going to put it right there. Okay. And let me show you a reason why you want to add two pips of spread, a trade that we actually took earlier this week. Your JPY. Right. Look at this monster. This is disgusting. Right. Absolutely disgusting. Okay. We actually took this off the 30 minute time frame. Right. Sexy institutional candle right here. But what would have happened if we did not add spread? probably would have got stopped out right peep this right if i would have put my stop loss right at the top of this wick we definitely would have been kicked out that trade drop a drop a two in the chat if you understand okay so if you guys do not add spread to your stop loss start doing it why literally think about what i told you if you would have put your stop loss right at this wick i guarantee you spread would have kicked you out this trade that's not even a pip away spread definitely would have kicked you out this trade you know how mad you would have been to miss this? You would have been mad for the rest. You probably would have broke your damn laptop. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, right? I'm going to be honest with you, bro. So always make sure y'all add spread. Everybody's been kicked out of a trade early, even though it didn't officially hit the stop. Because technically, if you think about it, this technically would not have hit the stop loss based off of physically hitting it. But spread would have definitely kicked you out of this trade. No question about it. Yeah, two pips of spread. So this is literally what I do. So notice how this is 15. I'm always going to put my stop loss right at that wick. And then I'm just going to see, okay, so this would basically be 13. I bet I'm just going to add two pips of spread to that. Let me know if that makes sense, Axel. That's literally all I do. So I always put it right at the wick, see where it is. And then I just add two pips to that. I round my stuff off. So like, say, for instance, my stop loss was like 12.5. I would round that up to 13. And then I would add two pips of spread to that. Right. Let me know if that makes sense. Cause I like I like even numbers. So that that's just me personally. Not everybody does that. That's why you guys are always going to see my entry. My safe profits are always going to be even numbers. It's never going to be like one through one point five six or something like that. It's always going to be zeroed out. That's just me. All right. So always make sure y'all add spread. Every single trade I do, I always add spread. Trust me. I had to get kicked out of a few trades and be mad before I'm like, man, I probably should start adding spread. <laughs> probably should start adding spread um but look same thing so look the same way i showed y'all like i said this is a manipulation week but on a small time frame it's a body i learned that from um starboy and you guys tap instead i learned that from an educator so he used to always say you want to start going down time frames until you find more body than wick so whenever you have a lot of wick go down on the time frame until you find more body than wick and here that is by definition but look at how subtle it is, right? Literally think about what I'm showing y'all. Every single one of these time frames is ugly. The only time frame that gives you a pretty candle is specifically the 55. The 50 doesn't do it. The one hour doesn't do it. You need the 55 specifically just to find this nice candle. So, you know, I'm just giving y'all the gems, man. But yeah, this is basically the setup. Um, like I say, you know, I'm still gonna hold this. It's still valid as far as I'm concerned right now. Just got to wait to see what it's going to do. But I do think that this is going to be a good trade. It's going to make a, make us our money back from um, uh, the GBP and ZD, even though we're, I'm, we're technically up for the week just based off of the other successful trades. But, you know, um, so, yeah, overall, I'm looking for this move. So I'm overall looking for 13, about 14 to one. Realistically, I at least expect it to come here. Even if it doesn't drop down here, I at least expect it to break this low. So realistically, we can at least minimum expect about a six and a half to one. Um, if I'm being honest, you know, anything past TP1 and TP2, if I'm being honest, it's not guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed, but 
I'm usually at least betting on TP1 and TP2. My TP3 and my swing TP, I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of times them shit's just not gonna hit. I'm gonna just, <laughs> I'm gonna be real with you, right? And we all know that, right? Whenever you set a take profit three and take profit four, you have to internally be aware, it's probably not gonna hit it. Percentage wise, it's probably not gonna go there. But obviously you always wanna leave a little position just in case it does, okay? So I really try to mentally focus on, okay, what is my risk to reward on TP1 and TP2? That's what I think I'm actually gonna make. These other TPs are just bonuses because a lot of times the market is going to pull back and hit your break even before it hits these additional take profits, okay? Just got to be honest with yourself. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, we have basically, you know, broken down what I was going to break down. So I, I put in a lot of time on a loss that we took. So like I said, I want to be able to always show you guys, don't be afraid to lose. It's guaranteed. But you want to be able to understand, is there anything I could have done differently or is this just a loss that I just got to hold on to? And like I said, by definition, this is just a loss I got to hold on to. There's nothing I could have did any differently. And I'm okay with that. 100% okay with that. Um, and then, like I said, I broke down CAD JPY. So I want, I want y'all to see this. Look, peep this, right? CAD JPY, the same way CAD JPY, we sold it. It dropped. It came back. We're trying to sell it again. As I just said, that's the same exact thing we did on GBP JPY last week. Okay. We sold it, it dropped, it came back, we sold it again. So literally, that's why they say, all you have to do is start identifying the same patterns in the market. The market is literally gonna do the same. Now these setups specifically look different, but the concept of what you're saying is the same. We sold it, it pulled back to the same relative area, we sold it again, right? We tried to do the same thing on GBP and ZD, didn't work out. Now we're gonna try to do it again on CAD JPY. So what do we do? We sold it, it pulled back to the same entry. We're gonna try to sell it again, okay? That's basically it, guys. Um, so with that being said, I appreciate everybody for being on the call. What I'm about to show y'all is what I'm about to do. So obviously, um, like I said, I never know necessarily who is and who is not in IM since my calls are open to the public, but like I tell y'all, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, every time I do this call, whenever I hop off this call, literally what I'm about to immediately do is go into student mode. So I'm in educator mode. Now I'm about to hop off and go in student mode. I'm about to go get on John Dollary and Rock Kumar um, and, you know, see what they're talking about. Because to be honest, I'm not rich yet. They are. So I'm never going to fool myself and think that I need to stop educating myself because that would just be foolish. OK, so I'm about to go hop on a session. Um, like I said, this call is being recorded and I will see you guys literally at the same time tomorrow, 1 a.m. Central, 2 a.m. Eastern. And bring a friend if you want to. Like I said, take my link, share it with somebody. If you don't know how to get my link, um, obviously I'll drop it one more time. But if you follow me on Instagram, at official Tyree Samuels, my link is going to be in my bio. Also, if you're subscribed to my YouTube channel, I literally dropped that in my own chat. That's funny. So if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and every single video on my YouTube channel, my link is in my description. Let me show you an example real quick before I hop off because... I'm already missing four minutes of sauce. You feel me? So if I literally click on any video, let me actually go ahead and pull them up while I got them on here so they can already be preloaded. Hold on. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let me get some education up in it. All right. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Ah, snap. Snap, crack, look, pop, rice, crispy treats. All right, cool. Where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see what them boys talking about. Let's see what them boys talking about. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm wide awake, boy. Feeling good. Okay, cool. So they, they ain't really started talking. Slow week of uh, opportunities. All right. They ain't really started talking about them yet. Cool. All right. So uh, before I get ready to hop off, once again, literally any YouTube video, you can click on any random YouTube okay. video. If you scroll down, go to the description. Here's my Telegram link, okay? So copy that, send it to your mama, send it to your daddy, send it to your homeboy, send it to your niece, send it to your nephew. Next time you get on the call, bring a guest with you. Damn, I literally just exited out the call. But all right, that's it, y'all. So like I said, I'm about to go ahead and um, hop off. This call will be uploaded to my YouTube channel later on in the day. I appreciate everybody for hopping on. Y'all have a blessed one, and I'll see y'all tomorrow at the same time. Peace.